Oh, you really do look like a little boy right now. Life is great when you cut your hair impulsively. Beautiful. Hello everybody, welcome back to Making It Up. I'm Isa, and today I have a really fun video for you guys. I always say the same thing, but let's not break the routine, okay? Today I have another Makeup 101 video. If you're new here, subscribe, but also you will not know what I'm talking about. Um, a few months ago I decided to start doing a Makeup 101 series where I break down every makeup step and I explain it to you so if you're a beginner or someone who isn't really into makeup and just wants to become more of an expert or if you're just someone who wants to refresh the steps, this series is perfect for you. And today I have the blush section, so the blush section, and yeah. We have Blush 101, guys. Today I'm gonna be talking to you about blush, how to apply it, how to choose blush, different types of tools to apply the blush. If you're into blush, you're probably gonna like this video. If you wanna learn how to apply blush, if you're not a blush lover but want to be, then this video is for you. Make sure to subscribe and let's head straight on because this is kind of a long one. So as always, we're going to start off with our basics. First thing we have to define is what is blush. To me, blush is like a pink slash red toned powder or liquid or cream product that is used to add color into your face. So basically what it does is that it adds color to your face and makes you look like you're blushing, hence the name blush. It's just made to give you a more natural look, I think, to make your face look more dimensional and obviously to just make it look healthier, you know? So that's what blush is and that's what it does, just in case you didn't know. Now as always, we have types of blushes. We always have different types of product and we're going to do the rundown right now. So the first one that we have is powder blush. I have this one by Flower over here and powder blush is the most common. Anyone can find it anywhere and yeah, it is just, I feel in my opinion, the most easy to apply, the easiest to apply because everyone knows how to use this because everyone's always used this. So there we have powder blush. Next up we have cream. I have my Juice Beauty blush right here and it looks like this. Most of the times cream blushes come in pots or compacts like this one and they're the most natural type of blush you could apply to your face so they're always going to be the least pigmented most of the time. There are some that are more pigmented than others and they're gonna look the most natural and dewy on the skin. Last but not least we have liquid blush. I have my cloud paint and beam over here. I know everyone uses these so that's why I included it. Liquid is very similar to cream in the sense that it looks kind of natural but liquid dries down cream doesn't so if you want something that's a little bit more long lasting Lasting, maybe not look as natural, liquid is the way to go. Now it's time to move on to how to choose blushes. I always like to include these tips whenever I do a Makeup 101 video because it's important to learn how to choose the products that we want to put on our face. So first, you definitely have to pick a shade that flatters your skin tone. If you have a cooler skin tone, go for a cooler tone blush. Most of the time, those will be the pinks and the purples. They're more, you know, based on blues, not so much on yellows. And if you have warm tone, complete opposite. Something that pulls more orangey and peachy will look better on you. But I don't like to play by the rules a lot, so definitely experiment with colors and then you can go and choose the ones that do work for you and the ones that don't. So always try to experiment, try all the different colors and you decide for yourself. If you follow these guidelines or you pick the shade that suits you better from experimenting, this will always look very natural on you. Also a good guideline for blushes is consider the look that you're going for. So if you're doing a full glam look, consider the colors that you're using on your face. If you're doing something that's really mauve and purple on your eyes, maybe try to do that on your cheeks as well. So maybe I'm a really uh, warm tone person, so I like peachy blushes, but if I'm doing a purple smoky eye, I'm probably not going to add a lot of orangey blush onto my skin. I'm probably going to move towards something more mauve or pinky because that's what's going to work with the tones and the rest of my makeup. Also, this is like an old school trick. A lot of people talk about it, but if you're not sure which way to go with your blush match it with your lipstick you can obviously do a whole monochrome look but if you just want to do something that'll look very flattering on you even though you have a lot going on maybe try to pair it with your lipstick to make the look more cohesive you know I don't usually do that a lot but I have heard of people who do it if you're just not sure which blush to use whenever you're doing a look 
always match it with your lipstick because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So now it's time to talk about blush tools, the tools that we use to apply our blush with. I always mention tools because it's important to know how to apply your makeup with which tools to, you know, get different results. So I always like to include that. Let's head into the blush tools. First things first, as always, you have your fingers Fingers will work best with creams and liquids. They will melt the product the best onto your skin and they will make it look very even and fully pigmented because the finger will not absorb anything. So if you grab a little bit onto your finger and apply it onto your cheek, you'll get the most pigment out of the product. Next, we have these sponge beauty blenders or beauty sponges work perfect for literally everything, but this will also be best for creams and liquids. These will make your life easier when you're blending it, but they will absorb more product. So the look will be more natural. So if you're going for something that's more natural, you don't want full pigment on your face, go for something like this and it'll look really nice and like you're just flushed. Last but not least, we have brushes over here. They obviously work with all three of them. I would say if you want a brush for a cream or a liquid, go for something like a stipple brush because it'll disperse the product more lightly instead of just packing all the pigment on and not blending it well. And also go for something that's synthetic. I don't know if this is synthetic, but I don't usually apply my creams and uh, liquids with a brush anyways. I do use this for my powder blush that I use most of the time because I do find that it's easier to blend it out and it doesn't disperse much product onto my cheeks so I can build it up as I want to but it is also ideal for the other two and if you're just going for a powder blush you can also use something like this this is more of a traditional uh, brush that is used for blush and bronzer it's kind of small you can definitely blend it it'll pack the color more so if you want something that's more pigmented and more dense for that you can use this it also works perfectly for powder blush. And now that I've touched on all those points, it is time to demo this onto my face. I am boiling. First things first, we have to determine where we're gonna apply the blush. This will vary from face to face, but I think it's all about experimenting. There are a ton of face charts on Pinterest and on the internet that are talking about your face shape and where to apply what. I don't like to follow those. I just like to experiment and find what looks best for me. I'm sorry I use my hands a lot. I love I like to apply blush in the apples of the cheeks, so I always like to like fake smile like this. And where it like bunches up, where my cheek bunches up, I always apply the blush there and I blend it backwards. I don't apply a lot of blush in the back of my cheek, I just like to disperse whatever is left from what I applied to my apples onto the back. So it's not like applying a lot of blush in a stripe. It's concentrating the product in the apple and then diffusing it back. Okay, that's what I like to do. And this is a trick that I've learned. I don't know where, but I've heard a lot of makeup artists and professionals talk about this. If you're not sure how far in to take your blush, if you put your finger right here, it supposed to be like finger length away I think so you're not supposed to go in here and the same goes for your eye so if you put your finger here it's not supposed to go all the way up to here so it's an easy guideline if you're not sure how far in to take your blush okay so first I'm going to apply some uh, cream or liquid blush. I'm gonna go in with my Glossier Cloud Paint. This is a liquid blush. It is very similar to creams, but this one will dry down because I will layer a powder blush on top. So I'm gonna do this like I normally do. And with this particular product, a little bit does go a really long way, so I don't need much, but it depends on the product that you're using. What I always say is less is more, so always start with a tiny bit of product and then build it up if you need to. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this blush onto my finger and then I'm gonna smile and then apply it. You may be a little overexposed there so you might not be able to tell but and if you feel like it didn't blend well you can go in with your sponge and further blend it out. Another thing I will say about cream and liquid blush, whenever you're doing your makeup, if you wanna add a cream or liquid, always try to do it before applying your powder. After you apply your powder, sometimes the formulas don't mesh well with the powder and they like ball up. So just to, you know, be cautious about that, 
if you have a very lightweight powder or you don't like to powder your face, that's fine. I find that the cloud paints work perfectly on top of powder, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so do this step before applying your powder. Okay, and after you've applied your cream or liquid blush, it should look like this. Let me just take the exposure down a little. So as you can see, it's very light. You're probably not gonna be able to tell how much color I applied on because I only used a little bit since I am going to be layering it. But if you want more intensity, you obviously can add more. If you feel like you need to blend any more, just go in with your beauty blender or your fingers and just pounce a little bit more. But other than that, we are done and we can move on to the powder. Okay, so for the powder, I'm gonna be applying it with my brush and I'm just gonna be using a similar tone. The blush was a little bit pinkier, this is a little bit peachier, but yeah, if you're layering, just try to use something that's kind of a similar tone. And I'm just gonna be applying, again, just a little bit of the blush onto the brush. That rhymed. And then you can build it up as necessary. I'm applying it on the same spots that I applied the other one and I'm just gonna make it look a little bit more intense. I like to do swirling motions, I also like to do like sweeping motions. It doesn't matter. That's not like a technique that I really focus on. It's just spreading the blush around. I also always like to apply whatever is left on the brush after I've done all my face. I like to go into the nose a little bit just to add like a little bit of cohesiveness. I don't know. It's something weird that I like to do. It adds a little bit of blush to the nose and then the cheeks are done. Let me just show you. So as you can see, I've applied more blush. If I smile, it is literally right here. And if you ever feel like you need any more, always grab your brush and a little bit of product and blend some more. Last but not least, I'd like to touch on some tips on how to make your blush look better. Most of the times, blush is the first thing to go. That's why sometimes I like to layer because I always find that a few hours after I've applied my makeup, my blush is literally gone. So I do like to pile it on a lot whenever I'm applying it. I kind of look like a clown, but that is because I want it to last me a little bit longer. So if that tends to happen to you, always layer and add a little bit more than what you need. Also, if you feel like you applied way too much blush, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm a clown and I cannot go out of the house like this, it's very easy to reverse that. So what you're gonna do is either grab your foundation brush, your powder brush, or whatever you use to apply foundation. I'm just gonna use this beauty blender and I'm just gonna run this over the blush and the whole area. And it's, most of the times it's just gonna absorb the excess product if you're using a sponge. If you're using a foundation brush, it's just gonna blend in with your foundation, so it's gonna look a little bit more natural. So yeah, that's always, always a very easy ruler tip. Always have your foundation brush, your powder brush, or your beauty blender on hand to pounce out any mistakes or take them off your, your foundation. It is your choice. This is the final look. It looks very natural. It doesn't look like I've over applied it or applied it in areas that don't need blush. So yeah. And that's basically it for today's video, you guys. We talked about the basics, how to find a blush that works for us, which tools work for us, and how to apply the blush. So if you enjoyed this and you found this helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any other blush tricks that you like to do that I didn't mention today, probably you have more than one, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to learn from you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new here. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, you'd be getting more content from me. I don't know why I did this. I promise, I promise I'm cool, okay? I am cool. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> also, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'll leave the link down below and my username is right here. And I think we're officially done. Thank you all so much for watching. I will definitely see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.